Today we are in Bremerhaven at the test site of the 88180 turbine and I'm together with Maite Baisurto, Chief Technology Officer of ADVEN and Professor Andreas Reuter, Managing Director of Fraunhofer IWIS, which is running this turbine and using it for research purpose. Welcome. And in April, we saw the first German offshore auction that uh, brought along bids for subsidy-free offshore projects from Dong and ENBW. And this means that these wind farms that will be commissioned in 2024 and 2025 will rely completely on the market price. And uh, this demonstrates a very huge belief in the further reduction of uh, costs for energy and also in the te technology development. So this leads to my first question. Um, Ms. Basurto, do you see further low-hanging fruits for cost reduction in offshore wind energy? I will not talk about hanging fruits, but yes, there is a really uh, a, a room for improvement, reducing the cost of energy. Uh, let's say that uh, the, the track record in the industry is impressive when going to innovation and, and lowering the cost of energy. And an example of this is the, the last prices we saw in the, in the tenders in Denmark, in the Netherlands and in Germany, even in some cases with zero subsidies. Uh, there is really uh, an option for lowering the cost of energy with the, the power rate of the turbines, the rotors, and also why not with all the lessons learned that the manufacturers have in terms of design, manufacturing, operation and installation of the turbines. Mr. Reuter, how fast can these developments take place? What do you think? So regarding how fast this can be implemented, this is of course uh, one question to the engineers, but also uh, one question which is answered by the market. And the market says as fast as possible which means that probably within the next one, two, three years, we see the increase of turbine rating um, and also the increase of uh, rotor size. Uh, and so my expectation is that within the next two, three years, we have at least the 10 megawatt turbines running and probably also 200 meter rotors. And uh, which key innovations can we expect for offshore wind uh, during the next years? Okay, key innovations uh, where we are focusing as uh, manufacturers are the increase of the power rate of the turbines, let's say that in a range from 10 to 15 megawatt, and also just the development of uh, large rotors to be able to gather more wind from, from the turbines. And uh, regarding this turbine here behind us, uh, where do you see potential for even further cost reduction. Yes, in the 8 megawatt turbine we start with a power rate of 8 megawatt which is impressive in terms of cost of energy and in addition uh, the turbine uh, fits the largest blade in, in the industry currently. So this goes to make uh, the annual energy production one of the best in the, in the industry right now. In addition to that, uh, let's say that the, the turbine has an exhaustive uh, validation campaign. An example of this is the drivetrain testing in Dynalab here in Bremerhaven. And, and really, uh, the spread of that uh, to all the components and all the subsistence of the turbine make that even before installing the turbine and before running, we can optimize the performance of the turbine. And also, during the running of the turbine, we can assure high reliability. How can Fraunhofer Ives contribute to this development? I see a lot of areas where we can contribute, especially when it comes to the point of reliability of these very complex systems. We have done a lot of work in the past and I see there um, areas, especially for example in power conversion, reliability, but also structural re reliability, where we have a lot of experience and have developed approaches um, to improve um, the overall reliability of these systems. Ms. Basurto, how do you evaluate the potential for floating offshore wind for the future? Yes, uh, floating wind is really a very interesting area. Currently it's a niche, but uh, this niche in the future, with time, will for sure will develop in a large market. Uh, the floating foundation uh, will allow us to increase the wind power capacity to areas with very shallow waters now 
or with some specific seabed conditions that do not allow for the installation of fixed foundations. So it's really an area where there will be a, a future development for a large market. And which challenges need to be tackled when we talk about floating offshore wind? So regarding floating offshore, I see two areas which are still very challenging. The first one is regarding the size of turbines. Our understanding is that for floating turbines have to be even larger than for bottom fixed turbine to make it economically feasible. And so we're really moving towards these 15 megawatt turbines, uh, which is way larger than what we have currently. The other area is um, how to fix these floating um, platforms to the ground. We have the issue that we go to seabeds which are much further down than in conventional offshore. Uh, the understanding of seabed um, concepts for fixing the platforms and so on uh, needs to be developed and um, proven. Uh, so a lot of work to do. So thank you both for sharing your estimations and opinions with us. You're welcome.